Yeah. yeah. It's the first day of half the winathon. Yeah. Um, and I've just started Rosemary's Baby by Aaron Evans. And that's the one we're going to watch the movie of, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, I haven't read very much, but I'm liking it so far. Yeah. Um, it's written in 1967. I haven't already said to bed, it's got some dated language. Yeah. I just thought I'd put that out there. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm kind of... I'm, I'm, I'm liking it so far. That's good. It's kind of got a nice kind of light uh, humour yeah. to it, actually, oh, which I wasn't it. expecting. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So I'm reading the reincarnation of Peter Brown. Uh, I started it last night, actually. Cheating, some yeah. might say. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of hurtling through it. I'm enjoying it. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of really bad in the way that I hoped it would be. Okay. In that sort of seventies kind of, uh, it's really um, disparaging. Of like, I keep saying about like idiots that do like tarot and astrology. Um, meanwhile, he's like working out that he's reincarnated. But he's because he's a sensible man. Mm. He's fighting it because it's like. I don't believe in that kind of nonsense. Yeah. Um, but I'm enjoying that part of it because it's quite funny. You know? So, yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's good. Hi. So, it's 4.30 on the first day and I've actually finished Rosemary's Baby by Ira Levin. Um, I've been pretty much reading it all day with breaks to make hummus. Um, I loved it. I was like, I wasn't really expecting that much from it. And then I took, um, like straight away, was kind of really drawn into it. It's written in 1967. So oh yeah, I think I said in the park earlier, it's got like, it's got some language issues, a couple of bits, pretty grim. Um, but it feels very kind of of its day as well in the in the way that it feels like he's making kind of contemporary references. So like the books that Rosemary's reading or going out to the theatre or sort of different actors and things. So it feels really sort of of its time. Um, yeah, it was, it was, I was hooked. I really enjoyed it. I haven't read the introduction by Chuck Pornick, so I'm going to read that and see what he has to say. Although I've read the first line and I thought it was, um, I really liked it. He said... Before I was 11, horror always happened somewhere else. So it's like a horror about like regular, ordinary people. I mean, I don't know if that's the case, but if Chuck says it is. So yeah, that's done. I'm thinking of reading my um, short story from here. I was going to be reading um, The Striding Place by Gertrude Atherton, so that I will have had two done, and uh, just on day one, and then I'd be like coasting. Um, kind of because I didn't really think any of this through, and so the other books I've got are actually quite big, so I might not be able to do them all this week. Um, I also need to read a few chapters of Night of the Mannequins. I'm not doing this for uh, the readathon, but I'm reading it with um, George Line and Riveting Reads. So uh, I need to, it's only quick, but I just need to read three chapters of that. And I haven't quite finished Disfigured, so maybe finish that too. That's my little update. Oh, we're going to watch Rosemary's Baby tonight, I think, which I'm quite excited about. Okay, I've popped back because um, I just read the introduction and it was really interesting. He is really short and he's that bit about um, horrors always happen somewhere else. Um, he said that prior to this, people would have, people had to like commute <laughs> to get their horror, like to Transylvania or Mandalay or the Hill House or the Bait Motor Hotel. So it was going somewhere else where the horror was. Um, and it also says here that it's reported that um, it does sort of say about it being really of its moments in here as well and it says that it was reported to be based on Anton LaVey and his church in Satan but it's also talking about in the intro like all the other kind of covens so like the Weather Underground, the Black Panther, the Manson family 
and it says there are books which document the culture and books that create it and Rosemary's book Baby is both. Levin gave readers horror, politics, religion and comedy, all of it set where we live but he was a tough act to follow. By 1973 Robert Maraska's burnt offerings once more placed the haunted castle in the deep woods without neighbours. In 1977 Stephen King's The Shining punted the castle even further perched in the snow by Rocky Mountains. Since 1967 no book has touched the classic you now hold in your hand. Hello. Hi, would you like to... I've just done my update. Okay. Would you like to give us your update? Yeah, yeah. I am... Um, yeah, this is Reincarnation of Peter Proud. Max Ehrlich. I think that's how it's pronounced, it's isn't pronounced. it? Yeah. I am... Um, I've got a pretty good chunk. I'm nearly over halfway, I'd yeah. say, guys. I've um, got my selection of music here. You're having a nice little day here. Currently listening to some Bat, bat for Lashes. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Making a day of it. Nice, isn't it? In bed. In bed. Not in bed, just under the top cover. Oh, yeah, just top cover. Yeah, yeah, it's Don't respectable, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, we've been out for a walk. And yeah, everything. we did the walk. Um, um, you didn't tell people about how right at the beginning when he's getting murdered, what he notices. <laughs> I mean, no one's reading this anyway, but that's no. not a spoiler, is it? It's right at no, the no, beginning. No, 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 it's literally. So it opens, it opens with the scene where he, in his previous life, turns out to be a dream because obviously the next chapter he wakes up and it's like oh what was that um it opens with a scene of him oh sorry being killed in a dream um aka his past life uh by a woman it doesn't explain why the woman's naked mm. um let me see if i can find that bit because um, so he's swimming in a frozen lake. Really, he's cold. He's drunk. So he went in there, but then he realizes it's too cold to be able to swim to the other side. This woman, um, Marcia, finds him. It's like canoes to him, and then starts hitting him with her oar. Mm, and she's naked. She's naked for some reason. Mm -hmm. He's dying, but um, he does notice as he's going down, drowning, being mm -hmm. hit by oars. That, um, her long, live white body, uh, the high, round breasts, breasts placed well apart. The nipples stiff with the cold, her small waist, the tight, flat belly, the long, milk-smooth thighs, the little tuft of fine black curling hair. Uh, and in this moment, in this frozen moment, he even noticed a small birthmark on her lower... So he's noticing everything mm -hmm, as mm -hmm. he's... Um, it's lucky he is, isn't as it? As he's going yeah. Under, yeah. She's got a birthmark just above the tuft of hair, it says. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's important details that he does notice yes. uh, his thoughts yeah. as he's dying. Yeah. So we get to know is him this, quite well. As would a you person. say it's like a, a feminist horror? This is so um, <laughs> like every predictable <laughs> trope and nonsense from the time <laughs> that you can imagine. So yeah, I don't know why, but it's particularly in the seventies, it's sort of like they, they so they're doing a book. It's obviously a bit it's about reincarnation, um, but they can't sort of enter the subject into like assuming that we might be open-minded to this stuff. So they always have to have, like, a sort of professional white guy that's, like, a, like a cynic mm -hmm. um, that's sort of really sceptical to sort of lead us through. Yeah, I guess it's this. that's who it's aimed at, isn't aimed it, I suppose? At, so it's assuming that kind of like you're going to be a... America kind yeah, of thing it was, that's assuming who's going to be reading it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, he's a college uh, professor, and he's looking at the notice board at the college, and it says there's... Um, the kids are really into the occult these days because they're a bit stupid, you know. Mm. Um, but it's just things advertising tarot readings, um, poems of myth and infinity, small gatherings, guru, Ram Das, it says. Mm -hmm. uh, karmic readings, spiritualist centre. It even mentions the Brotherhood of the Source. I've got a little mm. flyer on this. So it's pretty good, pretty realistic. Cosmic Joy Workshop, uh, Christ and the Tree of Life, Breath Workshops. Um, uh, bioenergetic anal workshops. <laughs> that one stumped me a little bit. So we we did a little bit. We had to look that up. Look it up. It doesn't exist, um, does it? I don't think there's such a thing as bioenergetic anal workshops. If anyone's had it, let me know. <laughs> <laughs>
Hello, it's Tuesday. No, it's not. It's Sunday. it's Sunday. <laughs> it's Sunday. Um, I've just been and done some cleaning um, this morning. And I am now hoping to finish and be done with <laughs> the reincarnation of Peter Proud. Um, it's pretty dreadful, guys. Um, like, a apart from the fact that it's just a bit, like, very, very predictable, even for me, in this tiny brain. Peter Proud has realised that he's been reincarnated. He's basically, most of the book has been spent sort of doing detective work, trying to find out the name and where this man lived that he used to be in his previous life before he was killed. And he's found um, what would have been his daughter in his previous life. Uh, and she's now 27, just the same age as him. Um, so he's looking at her, he's like, oh, this is, you know, oh, my, my daughter, kind of thing. And he's watching her play tennis. Um, she moved about the court with exquisite grace. Her legs were long and superb, perfectly fashioned, sensuously curved, the skin smooth and flawless, the kind you never saw in ordinary women. Her beauty was not surface, it was something she wore naturally. It was ripe and mature, the beauty of a full-blown woman of 27. Um... And then he sort of watches her sort of walk away and sort of admires her buttocks. Um, uh, so that's uh, problematic. <laughs> I'm speeding through it and I'm looking forward to watching the film. Um, obviously, he's like now he believes in reincarnation because obviously he's he was re reincarnated. And so the writers kind of really deeply sort of thought, like, what would be happening in your mind if you've discovered that reincarnation is a real thing and that you've had a previous life and many previous lives and like for like pages and pages he's just constantly like he's on a plane and he's looking around at everyone saying oh that person might have been a roman soldier or you know like he's walking down the street and he, he looks at people and he's like oh i wonder if they helped build the pyramids in egypt in a previous life and things like that and it's just like but then also like he's like no longer afraid of death because he knows that his soul will live on. But, like, he's not going to remember it. So it's the same. Same thing. Like, if he, you know, if he dies and then his soul goes somewhere else and he doesn't know about it, it's still... It's not great, is it? It's not a great situation. <laughs> so, um, we watched Rose from his baby last night. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was really long, wasn't it? It was incredibly long. It was, like, two and a quarter hours. Yeah. Which was, like... I think... Mm, like an, an hour, hour too long. an hour over your limit. Yeah, I like a short film. Yeah, but it was really good, wasn't it? It was really good. It was like um, it was really weird. I read the book and watched the film in one day, <laughs> <laughs> so it was like obviously very fresh, and it was kind of um, you know, really faithful to the the book. You know, had the same dialogue. Yeah, you're um, saying word for word, pretty much. Yeah, they're like they kind of obviously missed bits out because I guess they don't um, you know, you can't do exactly the whole thing, but yeah. It was really faithful, and then the, yeah, it's just like posh people, isn't it? You know, rich, yeah, these sort of rich, privileged Americans. Had John Cassavetes in, and not Bertie? Yeah, he I didn't remember I him he was being perfect in it. Yeah. for the role. Ruth Gordon, who I love, she was great. Yeah, Mia Farrow's brilliant though, isn't oh, she? Oh yeah, yeah, that? yeah. Sorry, sorry, Mia. Yeah, you were great. Yeah. Anyway, and so... um, haircut by Vidal Sassoon. Yeah. Classic pixie cut. Very 1968. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So last night I read my short story from here, which was um, really short. And it was called The Striding Place by Gertrude Atherton. Um, never heard of her, but it says here that she gained not notoriety as a snob and a bigot. Henry nice. James frankly declared, I abominate the woman. <laughs> never heard the word abominate in that. No, I had yeah. no. No, so he said, I abominate the women. So I'm have to look her up to see about her snob and bigotry. Snob and bigot. Um, like some of these, so when was this story written? Like, uh, I don't know, 18, late 1890s, I guess. I can't, I can't see on here. It doesn't say. Um, but like, I was just, I just read it and then I'm like, and that's it? <laughs> what? Has a really great last line. Hmm. Yeah. But the, and then I kind of had to go keep going back. So I was like, "What are we saying here?" Anyway, it was fine. Oh, well done. 
Yeah. And then I've also you your right, your arms hurting. Yeah, no, fine, thank you. And then this morning I started Katie by uh, Michael McDowell. Yeah. Um, really great sort of, I haven't read much at all, because then I went on some kind of Instagram yoga yep. hole. Um, but the um, prologue was great of uh, Katie as kind of a little girl. That was a really great prologue mm. um, featuring some puppies. Mm. Not in a good way. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. There we go. That's what I'm going to read today. Oh, nice one. You're going out now. I thought I would go. I've got some glitter eyeshadow on. Mm. I just go to Tesco, I yeah. thought. Yeah. Tesco kind of quite wants some chocolate. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I finished The Reincarnation of Peter Proud. Um, it's like a solid two stars for that one. I thought you gave it one. No, I, I marked it up to a two because it was definitely readable and I feel like, doesn't Sean look really cute today? So it's a two-star book. And uh, yeah, we're going to be watching the uh, movie now uh, after we've discussed the new Crunchy Biscoff. <laughs> <laughs> um, where did you find that today, Shani? Tesco. Tesco. It's Biscoff, but with um, the, Biscoff. The, the crunchy Biscoff biscuits in it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to like ASMR mm. it to the to oh, people, right. oh, but really? then you went for it. Oh. So. I will say the film was way, way better than the book. Um, I had a little nap. John did have a little nap. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, really glad to have uh, seen the film. Um, and and I, I guess the exception to the rule that the book is always better is those 70s sort of uh, slightly B-movie-ish <laughs> <laughs> movies. They're all read in the books. So we've learned something important here today. Yeah, a bad book makes a good film. Uh, yeah. Well, what did you think of that um, when you weren't napping, Shani? Well, yeah, it was all right, wasn't it? It was all right, wasn't it? It wasn't yeah. as good as Rosie's Baby. But yeah. it had some similarities. That's that. That's um, day two of yeah. uh, Half a Wienerfon. I haven't read much today. No, but we've it's both finished much. our book to movie, book and movie. Yeah, go us. Yeah. <laughs> Monday, so I'm working from home, and it's coming up to lunch hour. So on a Monday, I've got a new thing where I go and buy like a really nice salad from a cafe nearby. So I thought I'd show you that. Okay, so this is the salad. <coughs> Look at that. Oh. I'm really excited. I think these sweet kind of got some green kind of sauce on them rather than it being uh, <laughs> mulled. I'm pretty confident about that. So I've got that. And then I've also got um, this, which is black bean rayu. Um, and we had like a, it's like a sort of oily dressing thing. We had like a cashew one the other day and that was amazing. 
And then I've also got myself a San Pellegrino. Blood orange sparkling. And then the other thing I was going to do, so I've just got my water here, but I have got two pigs cold brew. This is like peach and mango. I think I had a free one from somewhere. And it was really nice. So it's just like a tea bag, but you just put it in cold water and then leave it for seven minutes. And it's delicious. I kind of imagine you could just make tea and let it go cold, but anyway, I'm up for it. The other update is that I've got a new kind of sprouter. So I've put some kind of broccoli seeds in there. And then there's another one oh, up here. Um, but he's just sitting in the dark for 24 hours to start the sprouting process. So I bought this one. And it wasn't very good for little seeds. So now I've got this one. Really good camera work, guys. Here you go. Bye. My cold brew tea. Peachy. Hi, Bert. Hi. Um, I'm reading Cat's Eyes. Lee How's that going for you? I'm um, about halfway through and I'm actually really enjoying it. It's a huge improvement on the reincarnation of Peter Proud. Um, I don't think it's going to be massively memorable, but I'm kind of enjoying uh, the sort of early 80s, um, slightly sort of horror, melodrama of it. She main character is uh, home alone, um, recovering from a car accident. Now I thought the premise of this one was that um, her husband had died in a car accident, um, but actually it was like the fixie man of the, of the village. So the, she's American. The what, sorry? The um, fixie man? Fixie man. Is that the term they use? No. Okay. Is that the term you use? <clears throat> the uh, kind of uh, man? handyman. <laughs> of the uh, of the village. So yeah, she's American. Uh, she's living in a like a little uh, English uh, little village. Um, her husband is a writer, and he's gone off to Hollywood for an indefinite amount of time to help with a, a screenplay. So she's at home alone, recovering from this injury. I guess haunted by the fact that she was responsible for this car crash which killed her passenger, the fixie man, um, which is caused by a cat. Mm. Um, the cat is kind of this sort of figure going around in the background. Um, she's kind of feral. She's big. She's injured and she's really hungry. Um, so she's kind of been causing a bit of disruption around the house, knocking over garbage cans. Um, just keeps appearing. And she's starting, Rachel is starting to think that um, this cat is haunting her, stalking her. Um, she's hearing noises at night and stuff. That's it. It's quite sort of charming. Yeah. Um, I'm really enjoying it. There's nothing hugely offensive yet. Yeah. Um, they, uh, one word that comes up a lot in 70s, 80s kind of stuff, I've noticed is ripe. Yeah. When, discuss when discussing uh, female bodies. Nice. It's a shame we don't have more of the use of the word ripe yeah. in uh, modern day literature. Um, but yeah, this, this, is, uh, this is an improvement. Good. I struggled uh, at the end of Reincarnation of Peter Proud to sort of want to pick up another similar sort of title, but once I got stuck in on this, this is uh, this is much, much better. That's great. So yeah, I'm enjoying. I'm Good. enjoying. And have you got allergies at the moment? I've got bad hay fever, which is yeah. why I didn't do any filming at all yesterday. Um, I spent most of the day sort of sneezing, rubbing my eyes, feeling a bit bloated. Mm. Um, uh, and yeah... So yesterday was a bit of write off. I'm still feeling a little bit, a little bit floopy today. Yeah. Um, but I've got to get out there and clean and help the kids cross the road. You so do. I'm, I'm trying to buck up. Oh. Also, just feeling a little bit, a little bit under the weather these days. A little bit like um, bored of my surroundings. You know, like a lockdown's been like a year exactly now, and I just kind of feel like. Um, the two rooms of this flat and the park mm. are kind of uh, they're kind of making me feel a bit enclosed in. Mm. So I'm but trying things... to rethink things and trying to yeah. reprogram my brain to 
to like feel like um to give myself a little bit more energy to do things in a different way but you start getting into patterns like especially when you have like my job is like so i'm out in the morning and i'm back for a couple of hours and i'm out again and i'm back for an hour then i'm out again so i start those those middle hours or whatever are just kind of waiting a lot of the mm. time and i don't really sort of find myself doing anything at that time so then usually the, the day is finished and uh, i haven't really done any anything in those hours that i've had the things are kind of you know opening up a little bit aren't they so maybe even going to get a coffee and sitting outside yeah. might be just like yeah do you know what has helped yesterday we went to asda <laughs> and, um i just bought myself some like really cheap new clothes because I don't fit into any of my old trousers anymore. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. And all my clothes are old. All my socks have got holes in them. My pants have got holes in them. And uh, and I'm literally in all new clothes. This yeah, uh, there's a very even, sweet jumper I picked for you. Yeah, it's kind of moss. Yeah. Uh, I even had new um, eight pounds trainers. Yeah. Had. So, uh, yeah, that makes me feel good. Do you feel a bit better yeah, because I of do. that? Yeah, I feel much better because of that. I fit into my clothes. You know, 41 now. I don't have the body of a 21 year old anymore. Uh, That's all right. Oh. So now, I'm very pleased with this body. Of mine. It's, it's protected me from COVID. Yeah. It's, it's supported me for 41 years. It's been through the ups and the downs. Oh. I'm very fond of it. So oh. I can't tell it off. For, no. For what's happened here. <laughs> oh, but. Well what a vlog. <laughs> Well done, Bozzy. Well done, Bozzy. Yeah, well yeah done. it's doing really well. Well done, doing really well. It's my socks. New socks. Hi. It's Tuesday. Tuesday times for <laughs> me and you. Yay! <laughs> um, I've been reading um, Katie by Michael McDowell. I am... I'm really enjoying Katie. I think it's really good. That's good. Um, I thought from the description that Katie was just going to be like a a little kid, but she's actually there's a, like a bit of the prologue where she's like a kid and she's, you know, probably evil, but um, evil. But mm. the she's now kind of like about eighteen. Yeah, that's what I thought. Too. Well, okay. Yeah. I was thinking it was going to be like some six year old kind of thing. Oh, the really? Hammer. No, that's why I was Should getting those um, other... Lizzie Borden sort of oh, things. Oh, yeah, sort of yeah, age. yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's... We haven't seen that much of Katie yet because it's about this main character, the main character so far called Philo. Um, and then she's gone to um, visit her grandfather because the grandfather is sort of trapped by Katie and her family, kind of, because it, they've long story which i won't go into anyway she's gone to save the grandfather possibly i don't mm. know if she manages that right um but yeah we were talking about that um because bert's been reading older books about often you have just like this awful sexist language or you know the words that are used and you can kind of like i was saying about the rosemary's baby there is some language that is dated although i thought that one was pretty good in terms of yeah. um it didn't have it didn't feel like it was sexist it was more just like it was that i think part of rosemary's baby do you think is about that kind of not being you know she was trapped in that yeah situation having... wasn't she she didn't have any autonomy yeah um but this is just great it feels actually quite contemporary it almost feels like a bit like sarah waters or something hmm. um not that i don't know yeah so i'm really liking it and i'm definitely going to read more by him that's good. Yeah. He um, sadly died from AIDS-related illnesses, Yeah, like in the 90s. Um, so he, he was a gay man. Um, yeah, that might just, explain the the sort of not... Um, not using the word ripe about Objectifying yeah. language of women. Yeah, it? and there hasn't been any stuff like, you know, in covering herself, covering her curbs, you know, all that kind of language. Does it, does it have a scene where she's getting dressed and looking herself in the mirror? <laughs> admiring herself in the mirror <laughs> no they're like no. they're the women in this are like actual people it's well, like a revolution <laughs> it's wild i know right yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. i'm reading everything he's ever written <laughs> also i've realized that he's a gemini that you know following on from uh yeah i don't know if that helps any yeah it does i mean yeah. all, all great writers are yeah. Gemini, so. yeah, yeah 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 
Yeah. There you go, there's lunch. Rice and a bit of homemade hummus. Yum. Do you think it was the cat? I think it might be the cat. Yeah. Mm. I'm not reading something from my TPR. Mm. I'm reading queer <laughs> graphic history. Mm. Just to clarify that I'm reading this book as part of the book of a monster in mm -hmm. the prompt. And here we go. The, the vet is saying you've made it into a sort of monster, but it's only a cat. It is a monster, she said. Yeah. So it does fit into the totally. monster category, just and to confirm that yeah. it does. And we confirmed before mm. that cats are monsters. Cats are monsters. Cute, cute monsters. Yeah, yeah. and it is a monster. Yeah. That's okay then, in case in case anyone was doubting that you had a monster book. Yeah, anyone that's been, was about to challenge me. Yeah. I, I, it says it, it, it's it, a says it right there, yeah, page yeah, yeah. 103. The um, Hello, Half a Weenathon, please. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this is um, uh, night time in the forest. We had a good cawing of the blackbird, you thought it was, didn't you? It was a crow, was it? Crow. Or, yeah. Some owls. Some owls. Yeah. Nice being in the forest, isn't it, Bertie? Very much so. Yeah. Bertie, make coleslaw. Yeah. Here it is. It's Bertie's speciality. And then with that, we're having some potatoes and mint and then some beetroot burgers. Yeah, that's the update. Pausing Sage for some important news. What's the important news, Bertie? I finished um, last night actually. I finished Cat's Eyes, so that needs a cat on there now. Read a book about a monster. Yeah, so read a book about a monster that's done. Pop a cat stick on it, Bertie. Yes, well done. Thank you. You read Night of the Mannequins this week as well. I did read Night of the Mannequins, it was not on my list, but I could count it. Mm hmm. Good night. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Mm. You okay? I'm okay. I've still got um, hay fever troubles. Yeah. Um, do you want to hear more details? About your hay fever? Mm. Um, no? Okay. Uh -huh. uh, I'll talk about the book <laughs> in that case then. Well, as I said, I started... I am interested though in your, your theory about how you had a bad stomach, but if you wrote a poem that the bad stomach would be better... <laughs> And I'm sure everyone else is interested in that. Right, so I've had um, bloating last few days and sort of just, um, yeah, sort of stomach has felt a bit. Um, and then, so I've had my breathing's sort of been a bit difficult. I've, I've had a bit of asthma. And I feel like I've, I've been a bit like tight chest wise. So it occurred to me, and I tried everything else, tried bio. <laughs> Toast. What did you toast? Uh, coffee. <laughs> yeah. Um, it occurred to me that I just need to write. Yeah. And that that's the blockage. Right. So, uh, I, I'm I'm writing. I'm in the process of writing. What I think it's going to be quite a quite a long, um, ritualistic poem, um, as sort of catharsis to get all any blockages out. So the purpose of me writing the poem is really for my stomach to feel better. <laughs> I'm really happy with the poem. <laughs> um, this is day, just... day three of writing it today. And your stomach is slightly better. And my stomach feels much better. <laughs> so I think the lesson for me is that I just, feel, in terms of health-wise, and so I don't get any physical blockages, I need to express stuff, don't I? I need to get stuff out. Um, so, yeah, that's what, that's what I've learned. That's good, isn't it? I like that a lot. Tell us about your book. Um, I just started it. Uh, not, I, I picked very similar books mm. for um for this read up on. So that kind of seventies, eighties, yeah, generic, um, slightly melodramatic horror, 
Um, I really enjoyed Cat's Eyes. I'm going to give it four stars just in terms yeah. of enjoyment, not okay. not necessarily in terms of quality, but um, it was just like a, it was kind of like a cozy horror. Yeah. So you know, it was that kind of set in a small, sort of quite quaint, sort of English village, and it was yeah, sort of a woman at home alone, thinking she was being tormented by a cat and hearing strange noises, and then it was kind of like the machinations of like the, her neighbours and her friends. Uh, yeah, so I just enjoyed it. It was really um, fun read. That's what I needed. Um, and yeah, but this so far is pretty good. Um, it's a it, it's kind of it hasn't really said what the initial pact was that they made as children, but it sort of flashes back to it every mm-hmm. now and again. Um, she Esther has just bumped into for the first time in like however many years, fifteen years or whatever. Um, one of the other boys that was in the pact. Um, he is. Uh, has uh, reconnected with the other guy, Charles. That's uh, Brian. Charles, he's, he's, and they've arranged to meet up around at Charles's flat tonight. <laughs> tonight. Um, my favourite bit so far yeah. is they were in like a kind of like a trinkets shop, mm-hmm. like a almost like a new agey sort of shop. And Brian's like really into this. Uh, remember those? Fortune telling fish. Mm. You can buy those little red plastic fish and then like if it's still get them. Yeah, but this was like when they first came out and people were like, This is amazing. And they sort of it curled up on the side, it meant something if it head went up, it went meant something if it flipped over, it meant you were passionate or if you didn't do anything, it meant you were sort of you were dead. Um so that's turned up in here, which yeah. I quite enjoyed uh, that little flashback to the early eighties. Yeah. Um I see on the cover it's uh, by the author of Little Angie. Mm. Yeah. Little Angie was her first novel. Uh, yeah. Hey Angie, hey Angie. You got coleslaw in your hair. Mm. I'll be on my run my face. Um, I'm just updating on Katie. Katie. By Michael McDowell. Very much enjoying it still. Um, it's kind of going between Philo, well I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, Philo, Philo, anyway, it's going between, it's like the pastry, yeah, but I think she's like short for like maybe Philomena, but it's not, yeah, oh right, anyway, it's not important, and and Katie who just kills people, but can also like, um, she could just touch your hand and tell your future, so she kind of uses that and manipulates stuff, Um, poor Philo is just Mm. like, um, getting into like s- scrapes, <laughs> which are usually instigated by Katie. Right. Um, and they're they're ended. They're in New York at the moment, and um, there's a lot of like getting a load of money and then losing the money and then getting more money, all that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, I'd say like, uh, it doesn't really have to be in the horror section. I think this would be like a I don't know. I mean, just, genres are stupid anyway, aren't they? But like anyone could read it. Like you don't have to like horror. Mm. It doesn't feel particularly horror. It's like a historical will it, novel. Will it get with... more hor- hor- horror I mean, later like, on? It's maybe, like a historical yeah. novel with violence. Right. Okay. <laughs> if it, you know, like yeah. there's, the, there's lots of killing. There's not yeah. masses of killings, yeah. but there's a few. There's there's deaths, but but that's it really. I feel like. Is it it's... deaths with a hammer by a psychotic? Woman? There's been. Yeah, there's. I mean, I don't want to spoil it by telling you about the other deaths. <laughs> right. Okay. But there's been like a couple with a hammer because it says like, and then her, her stepmom kind of says, "Well, maybe you should use something else because the hammer's like leaving, you know." Oh, so the stepmom knows she's doing. Yeah, it. yeah. Okay. She's like, um, you know, it's leaving more like mark of what it is. Mm. Like someone's going to catch you, and she's like, "But I like using the hammer." <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really good. Yeah. 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 So I think it's very good. Mm. Mm. I'm glad. What have you been? What have we been watching recently, darling? Ghostfinders. Ghostfinders, yeah. I really like um, <laughs> ghost programs. You do. Yeah. Yeah. My favourite is Kindred Spirits. Yeah, that's the best. Or you know, like classic ghost hunters. Yeah. I love Jay. Like I don't want to hear it, but mm. about any kind of I don't want to hear it. Well, I love I love all the ghost hunting <laughs> shows as well. I'm not sure if I trust that that particular crew, uh, but they've got Ghost Nation now, haven't they? 
Yes, which I haven't. We haven't watched much, but it doesn't have no. it doesn't have um, Grant in obviously because no. he's gone on to release his album, the piano, piano, music, piano music, and yeah. and um, make board games. So he's busy. I think he turns up now and again. They were saying that. Does he? Or has he started a new thing? I don't like Ghost Adventures. Is that the guy with the oh, that's, that? Yeah, yeah, that's all. That's out. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's awful. Yeah. That's awful. But um, this Ghost Finders has got like mm-hmm. a. a a witch in it. She's great, isn't and she? And she's just like looking fabulous and then blessing things. Mm. I come with ears that wish to listen. I come with eyes that wish to see. I come with a mind that wants to learn. I come with lips that speak friendship and truth. And uh, I've been watching... Uh, Beyond Belief, Fact or Fiction. Oh, yeah, I don't like it. I've always loved it. <laughs> uh, I think it's stupid. Next, an unattractive woman learns the meaning of beauty and mystery on Beyond Belief, <laughs> Fact or Fiction. Have you wandered past those state-of-the-art cosmetics counters lately? Since you have, you may have seen this gizmo. The flick of a computer switch, you can see what you might look like. With another look all together. Take this potentially lovely creature, for example. How would he look, say... Without that distinguished beard. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, well, hang on a second. Oh. What's this over here? Oh, but it's been tied in. Less books there now, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. They're in the hallway. <laughs> I just moved them. We moved them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I finished, Katie. Yay. Yay. Guys, <laughs> it did get violent. Yeah. It did get more violent. Yeah. It's like hammer killings, and then there's a killing later on where she's like, "Oh, not a hammer," uh, but it's quite graphic. Graphic. Just thought I need to tell you that. Um, also, there's there's a few dog deaths. Okay. That I feel that needs to be said, doesn't Con- it? As content well? warning. Yeah. Hmm? Content, content warning, warning yeah. on dog death. Dog death. Um. So fun. <laughs> After I just said that. <laughs> Uh, it was just like um, I loved Katie. Mm. She was like awful. I mean, obviously mm. she was mm. she was quite creepy. Yeah. And then I love Philo. Philo. Don't know how to say mm. Um And the whole and then towards the end, it, because like stuff like bad stuff kept happening, and then stuff would be okay, and then bad stuff would happen again. Like I I had no idea where we were going if it was going to be like a really grim ending or a really happy ending. Right. So it had me like quite tense that's good towards the end there about how it was all going to be resolved um but i so enjoyed it will you be reading more definitely yeah i was saying to book this morning there's lots of kind of it's like penny dreadful so i i mean i don't really know that much about penny dreadfuls really yeah so i don't know if this is kind of part of the you know the whole penny dreadful kind of thing but there was lots of sort of coincidences so they'd be like you know she moved to new york and then she'd meet katie just in the street or and um, you know there was lots of little coincidences that, when you thought about them, seemed a bit ridiculous. But that's fine. It's alright, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. So I'm going to put my sticker on my. Uh... Yeah. We watched um, a Jordline video about uh, Malcolm. Yeah. I didn't read last night. Yeah, she was doing her favourite horror. Favourite horror. Oh, she hasn't read this one, but she had some Elementals. Yeah. And Amulet. Yeah. 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 And Moon of a Babylon. Yeah, they sound good. It's got a cat on it. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Well done, well done. Me. So you've got... I've just started Mina and the Undead, mm-hmm. and then I've got Empire of the Wild to read as well. What are you getting on, Bertie? Yeah. Um, they are going to uh, mm. visit the house where their blood bond took place in their childhood, which is in Wales. Yeah, in Abergavenny, I Near heard. Near Abergavenny. <laughs> the road. So that's fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's all right. Last day of Half a Wiener Thorn, Bertie. Oh, it is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Are you going to finish a book today? Maybe. Mm. 
No, no big deal though, Bob. No big, no big deal. deal. No fresh. Yeah. I'm reading this. Is it good? Um, I wouldn't say good. No. I'm, re I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Wouldn't say good. Um, but yeah, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Sometimes you need books like this. In your yeah. Life. Um, what's just happened? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, Esther and Charles are now sort of having an affair. Charles has just got married. Yeah. To Claire. Literally on their wedding day. Yeah. Charles was like, meet me Monday two weeks from now. Oh, Charles. To uh, Esther. Yeah. So he's he's kind of a bit of a sinister character, this Charles. Yeah. yeah. I don't like him. Yeah. Come with me, guys. We're going to go make some coleslaw. Or as my mum calls it, Chaucer. Um, I'm fully aware that I've worn oh. the same outfit through this entire film. <laughs> it's my new clothes yeah. from Asda. Yeah. Um, and I've worn oh, them and there's some, some of your pyjamas drying here. Yeah. And I've worn them every day. Yeah. Do Those on yours. Yeah, a bit more, huh? Oh, hi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this, oh, okay. Like okay, like we got it, we got it. This is the end of the vlog. You've reached the end. It's gone on for a long time. <gasps> Can we have an emoji to put? A little bat emoji if you've made it right to the end. If you've made it to the end. Yeah, a little got, bat emoji. We'd like to see a bat. Because we realise this is a very long vlog, so... Yeah. Bat emoji it. Um, we hope you've enjoyed our half a weenathon. Yeah. So, bat emoji. Thanks for watching. Bye. Toodaloo.